Well, let's take this 30, 60, 90 triangle right here with the sides D, E, and F, and we'll fill in the table. Okay, let's start out with a ratio. We've gone over this before in class, and we have an introductory video you can find. This is 1. This E has the radical 3, and this side is the 2. That is the ratio of the sides. The extended ratio is easy as 1, 2, radical 3. I'm nervous about saying that because really, in order, it'd be 1, radical 3, 2. So, let's see what we got here. If I were to make D equal to 5 and preserve that ratio, of course, if this side's 5, this side must be 10. This side's going to be 5 radical 3. That was probably one of the easier ones. Okay, how about the next one? How about if we're given 14, but it's here, it's F, and that means the hypotenuse here. Again, the ratio here, 2 to 1, or you could say 14 is to D as 2 is to 1, or just take half of 14, you've got 7. If this is 7, 7 is to 7 radical 3, as 1 is to 3. So, 14, 7, 7 radical 3. Again, not too difficult. How about this one? I'm going to start with this side being 8 radical 3, the E side. Well, pretty straightforward. If this is 8 radical 3, this side must be 8. Twice 8, 16. Again, easy one. But now you're thinking, how about this one? Let's change it up a little. Let's make F. Let's make the hypotenuse be 18 radical 3. This is a little funny here. Now, what's half of 18 radical 3? Remember, when I go from here, well, 2 to 1, 18 radical 3, half of that would be 9 radical 3. So I'm going to put a 9 radical 3 there. Then I've got to multiply 9 radical 3 times radical 3. What do I get? Well, as you can see, again, the 9 radical 3 goes here. But this 9 radical 3 times radical 3, you'll see the expansion right there, is the whole number 27. So just because this sign, the long leg, has that radical 3 in the extended ratio, it doesn't have to contain a radical 3. As a matter of fact, none of the sides do. Here, let's try this. Let's make E for a final. Let's make E equal to 12. Same thing here. I have a ratio from radical 3 to 1. Well, when I'm going from E to D, I'm not multiplying by radical 3. I'm dividing by radical 3. And when I divide by radical 3, and I can see here I show the rationalization of the denominator, 12 thirds radical 3, also known as 4 radical 3. So again, 12 divided by radical 3, 4 radical 3, and then I have to take that, double it, and I have 8 radical 3. Well, interesting diagram here. 60 and 60, well, that makes this triangle isosceles. It's actually equilateral, but isosceles is our definition that we need. Remember, base angles make the sides congruent. And in conjunction, I guess, with chapter 5, we know that this point, the vertex, is on the perpendicular bisector of, well, perpendicular bisector of the base. And since this is an altitude, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Let me just say this. That probably makes sense to you. That's paraphrasing a bit, but really that's what's going on. And that's the key here, because once I know that these two segments are congruent, you can see what I've got here. You can see I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm going to take half of 18, and there's the rest of the sides. 
Well, this is a fun exercise. I've got two different triangles, both of them specials. And, well, I'll just show you what they are. Clearly, 30, 60, 90. And the purple, and we know those ratios, 1, 2, and radical 3. 45, 45, 90 here, 1, 1, radical 2. Well, let's get to work with the purple ratios, 1 to 2 to radical 3. Well, radical 3 is to 1, as 9 radical 3 is to 9. So I know what E is. E is 9. The ratio here, 1 to 2. So the hypotenuse of the purple triangle must be 18. Interesting. Well, the hypotenuse of this triangle is also the hypotenuse of this triangle. However, this triangle is in the ratio of 1 1 radical 2. Uh -huh. And you know this by now. I'm going from radical 2 to 1, or I should say radical 2 is to 1, as 18 is to 18 divided by radical 2. 18 divided by radical 2, rationalizing the denominator, 9 radical 2. Now you've seen that before, but if, if you don't remember, here's the shortcut. Take this number, Divide by radical 2, what's half of 18? That's 9. So there you go, 9 radical 2. Works every time. Well, here's a fun and interesting question. Which of these four sets of numbers does not represent the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle? Or in other words, is not in the ratio, extended ratio, that is 1 to radical 3 to 2. Start with A. Well, let's take a half. Times radical 3? Hmm. That's going to be, well, radical 3 over 2. I double a half, I get 1. A checks out OK. If you were looking at 2, sorry, B that is, you were looking the wrong way. After all, radical 2 times radical 3 is radical 6. Radical 2 doubled is 2 radical 2. So B checks out OK. C. Now this is, you know, this one... It almost caught me there. It caught me sleeping at the switch. Because 5 halves times radical 3 is indeed 5 radical 3 over 2. But when I double 5 halves, remember that's 10 halves, which is 5. Or 5 halves double divide out the 2. That's going to be the whole number 5, not 10. So there's your guilty party right there. And finally, uh, do a check on 3. You can do that one easily. 3 times radical 3, right there, double 3, you get 6. So clearly, C is your choice. Well, here's sample 5 from our textbook, and let's see how Abigail decided to do it. Said, well, instead of this division, we're going to try multiplication. See how that worked out for her. Well, let me see. I simplify. On the right side of the equation, I've got 3x. I've got 9 radical 3 on the left. Let's divide both sides of the equation by the whole number 3. Boy, that's going to divide out nicely. And it looks like x still comes out 3 radical 3. Same thing. Well, here we go again. 30, 60, 90 triangle. The 30 is here. So my ratio, the 1, is opposite the 30. The radical 3 is the longer leg. And that 2 is the hypotenuse. So... If I'm given this side of 10, I'll go this way. Radical 3 is to 1, as 10 is to... Huh? How do I get that? Okay, it's 10 divided by radical 3, and you rationalize the denominator. So that's what you end up with. If you see this pattern enough, you'll just say, no, oh, 10 radical 3 over 3. When I double that, what do you get? Well, you get... 20 radical 3 over 3. Easy enough. Well, we got a given sign here of 4 radical 2. I have a 150 degree angle here. Let's get to work. Well, we know a couple things. This is clearly a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We take the linear pair there to get the 30. And this angle, of course, must be 60. This would be the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. This is the short leg opposite the 30, the radical 3 opposite the 60 degree angle. So that's your ratio. 
let's take two here, two to one, that is the ratio, half of four radical two would be two radical two. And the ratio here from this leg to this leg, one to radical three, two radical two times radical three is two radical six. Well, in this exercise, we're solving for the two missing signs. We're solving for the X and the Y there. We're given a side length here of eight. I have a 30 degree angle here and a 60 here. Well, we know triangle sum theorem tells us that the overall triangle is a right triangle. And well, altitude to hypotenuse, what we've got right here, tells us that we can split we have split this triangle into one, two, three similar triangles. Well, that means they're all 30, 60, 90 triangles. Let's have a look at those ratios. For the green triangle, the sides are in the ratio of one radical three, two. And using that, I can say, well, hmm, two to one, that's going to give us a solution for x. x is simply going to be four. It's going to be half of eight. So I got this side down, okay? Now, let's have a look at solving for y. Let's put on the ratios here. One, two, radical three for the, say, the brown triangle. So, radical three to one, as four is to y. Or in other words, I'm dividing by radical three. Dividing by radical 3, and you've seen this exercise on another page, it's going to look like that. 4 divided by radical 3 with a rationalized denominator is 4 radical 3 over 3. Well, we have an equilateral triangle right here. Side length, 20 inches. We're going to find the height in simplified radical form. I guarantee you it's on your chapter test. I know it's on mine. It'll be on everyone's. You have to know this. So, let's do this. Let's draw an altitude. And as you probably have suspected, it's going to split this triangle. There you go. Just like that, into a 30, 60, 90. And if we do that, we say, hmm, what do we got here? Ratio of sides, one, two, radical three. And if I've got 20 inch side here, well, obviously the half side is going to be 10 inches. And in this case, all we've got to do is say, aha, the altitude, 10 radical three. 